All right, so in this video, I'm gonna share with you why I'm switching to using Vim as my main text editor from now on, and what Vim is, why I think it's better than other text editors, the drawbacks, the benefits, and I'm also gonna show you a short little snippet of what the workflow of using Vim can look like, and that it's not that difficult to actually learn. So let's go. All right, so the first question to just get out of the way straight away is what is Vim? And basically Vim is just a text editor, that's all it is. And if you've noticed in some of my latest videos when I've been doing programming things, hacks and different things like that, I've been writing a lot of the code in something that looks like the terminal basically, and that is actually Vim. So why is Vim better than other text editors? I think there's lots of reasons that make Vim better than other text editors, but in my opinion, the main two ones are keyboard navigation and focusing on editing over writing. Most editors are focused on letting you write new text easily. Vim chooses to approach it from a very different angle, radically different even. Vim focused on making the editing of existing text as easy as possible. A core belief in Vim is that we spend more time editing existing text than creating new text, which means that the way to improve your efficiency is by making the process of editing as fast and easy as possible. This is especially useful for programmers since we usually spend time working on pre-existing code bases, fixing bugs, refactoring old code bases, and adding functionalities, etc. The main benefits of using Vim lies in the key bindings, I think, and that's where also the power of Vim really shows itself very well, because once you learn a few of those basic key bindings, you'll start to realize how limited your regular old shortcuts of the keyboard are, like control c and control v to be able to copy paste things. If you do that in Vim, it's just stupidly simple. It's basically just a button press and that's where the power is. And there's pretty much a key binding for any action that you can think of in Vim, which also makes it super powerful for editing and making changes to different things, which is most of what writing code actually is. It's just editing past mistakes and repeating certain lines and doing things over and over, which Vim does really well. So how does this work in practice and what can I do in Vim that I can't do in other text editors? Here's a good example of what the workflow of using Vim might look like when writing a simple program in Java that can calculate how old you are in moons. Oh, and on the topic of learning new things, this video is sponsored by Code Academy. That was a good transition. So with the new school year that's coming up, things are gonna be radically different from previous years. Most likely your school has been scrambling to put together some way of being able to teach remotely, which is not easy, and it means that it's likely not gonna be optimal yet, which is completely understandable. Code Academy is an already established high quality online learning platform. So they decided to create its first ever student membership. So you can now as a student get access to Code Academy's pro plan at a fraction of the price. You can get full access to Code Academy's interactive curriculum 
with more than 35% off the regular price. So it's really student friendly. So I really think that this is something that you should get. Code Academy is one of the most renowned platforms for learning anything and everything you need to know in computer science. And they've even thought about the fact that some of you may be losing out on some of the social aspects of school this year. And so they've added the ability to create community with a digital student center and community led chapters for college campuses. So if you sign up between the 16th of September and the 23rd of September, you can get an additional 20% off. So I think this will be a really useful tool for you in the coming school year so i really do recommend that you go and check this out now as you saw i was able to do a lot of things really fast with basically just the press of a few buttons and that is how it works and that's really what's great about vim but the drawback of this is that in order to create that short little video i had to actually write down all the different key bindings that i was going to use because i wanted to show specific ones that i personally didn't know and keep in mind that I'm an absolute beginner at this, so there's some basic key bindings that I don't know yet. And that is the drawback of it, is that there are so many different key bindings, and a lot of them are really useful. But with that also comes the learning curve of just remembering all the key bindings. That's the biggest drawback of Vim compared to other editors. You can't just open up Vim and get to work as you would with Visual Studio Code or another traditional text editor because nothing works the way that you're familiar with. I mean, you need to actually learn how to exit out of it. And with regular editors, that's not needed. You can just get started. So this is the reason that a lot of people, me included, get intimidated by Vim. There's few things in life that are as frustrating as opening up Vim and then getting stuck on the absolute first thing that you want to do which is to write text. I would compare this to getting a camera and then getting stuck on how to take a photo. And then after that, you get stuck on how to stop taking photos and then how to save the photo and then how to look at the photo and so on. This is why it's intimidating because Vim can feel like that. Like everything that you want to do is a struggle and that's why a lot of people give up. So how long does it take to learn? This is the good thing. It is actually really easy to learn. Once you just know three basic key bindings, you can start using Vim as you would with any other text editor. And three key bindings really is nothing. I can do that in my sleep. I can do this all day. Yeah, I got it all day too. The first of these three is lowercase i, which lets you enter into insert mode. Insert mode lets you write text however you want to do that, just as your regular text editor. So now you can write text and that's great, but now you wanna save your masterpiece. So how do you do that? Every button you press just writes text and there's no save button anywhere. So how do you actually do it? Well, before we save, we actually have to exit the insert mode. So the next one that you need is escape which lets you exit any mode. So once you're done inserting text, you need to exit that mode. So you press escape. Now you can write text. So now that we've exited the insert mode, we can get back to figuring out how to save. And that's pretty simple too. You just type colon W and hit enter. W in this case stands for write. And that's it. You've done it. You've saved the changes. Good job. So now you're kind of tired of this and want to go play video games. So how do you actually quit Vim? It's pretty easy too. You just type in colon Q and hit enter. And voila, you now know all you need to know to get started using Vim. And this is where you can really start to level up your game. For every key binding that you append to your list of knowledge from now on, will just improve your speed and efficiency that much more and get you that much closer to giving up your mouse for good. Which is everyone's biggest dream, right? So for the next step, I would suggest using Vim Tutor, which is Vim's built-in tutorial, which will teach you a bunch of additional commands and is overall just a really great tool. All right, so that's why I'm switching to Vim as my main text editor plus the fact that I think it's just a cool thing to kind of know. And I think it does increase your street cred as a programmer that much more once you know it. And I think that a lot of your friends will look at you as just a magician with the speed at which you're able to write and edit your code once you're able to use Vim. And on a more serious note, I think that it's just a really potent tool for increasing your productivity as a programmer and just making you that much faster and that much more efficient. And I also think that the hurdle of the key bindings and kind of the fear of learning all those new key bindings is not that big of a hurdle as it may seem because I think that you can easily pick up like 10 key bindings in an afternoon of messing around with it. So I really think that you don't need to be too worried about all of those key bindings and learning all of them straight away because you will learn them once you start using it and they'll kind of come naturally I think. So that's 
what I have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I got you some new information on Vim and maybe I got you to feel like you want to try out Vim for yourself. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you in the next one.